is going to be on how to apply a self tanner and also a little miniature review of the Sun Goddess self tanner. Applying self tanner is something that can be hard to get used to if you don't know how to do it properly and your tan can end up looking really bad if you don't do it right. So I've been using self tanner for several years now and I've really found some great tips and some great ways to apply it and little tricks you can do to really help your tan look amazing. So this is what the bottle looks like. You get eight fluid ounces of self tanner and I've been using this probably six or seven or eight times and I've hardly even used any of it. It still feels pretty full so this is going to last you a really long time. But this self tanner I don't have any complaints about it except for there's one thing um, it drips out of the top sometimes it leaks and that happens when I get it out of the fridge because you're supposed to keep it in the fridge it says. We well, don't have to but it says that that will help prolong the life. So whenever I take it out like I just did it just starts to drip. Um, so that's one thing and I notice it will stop dripping if I open the container and close it again like kind of release the pressure I guess. I guess just changing the temperatures all of a sudden it just starts to make it melt like whatever is in here. That's the only complaint I have but other than that I absolutely love this stuff. Everything is just on point with it. It doesn't make you look streaky. It doesn't make you look orange. It's super dark. I mean the list just goes on and on. It's cruelty free. Um, it doesn't have any like harsh parabens or anything weird. It doesn't stink doesn't make you sink. Um, it doesn't rub off on your clothes after you wash it off. Now it does have the bronzer in it and it has a little bit of shimmer. Um, it doesn't come off on your body but when you look at the actual lotion there is like glitter in it. But when you put it on I never see any glitter or anything. So but basically everything is just amazing. Like I've never tried a self tanner that does everything that a self tanner should do and not do as well. Like making you look weird. And it just looks so natural. Like, it doesn't look like I'm wearing a self tanner. I don't have any weird lines. Like, it just blends nicely. It's so easy to apply. And it comes with gloves, too, which is really nice. And you also get a whole pack of, like, a bunch of samples. And I've also used this on my face, and it works really well on my face as well. Because I know, I don't think they have one that's made specifically for your face, but I don't have any breakouts or any problems with this on my face. So I hope you guys enjoy it, and I hope you learned something from it. And definitely comment below if you have tried this self-tanner out, because I'd love to know your thoughts on it. So let's go ahead and get into the whole tutorial part on how to apply self-tanner effectively. When I'm in the shower, I use this St. Ives oatmeal and shea butter body wash and this is very important because this stuff is very moisturizing you want something that's extremely moisturizing but you also do not want to use a soap a soap leaves a residue on your skin and you don't need anything extra as a barrier in between your skin because the self tanner is not going to soak in right and it will just not last as long and it's not going to go on evenly so I would not recommend using any bar soaps or anything none of those really cheap fragrancy body washes that might leave some type of silicone residue on your skin um, I just really like the St. Ives one. It's pretty natural. Um, it's very moisturizing because it has the oatmeal and shea butter in it. So definitely recommend this one. And then the exfoliating sponge that I use with it, this is wet because I just used it in the shower. But I get these at CVS. Um, I can't remember the brand. I think it's just like a generic brand. But they come in like a package. They have it with all of the like loofahs and the Burt's Bees stuff and all the exfoliating stuff where they have like the gloves and all that. So you can find those at CVS or any type of like... Um, exfoliating sponge or a mitt, something like that. It's just very helpful. I really love this type of texture on the sponge because it just really exfoliates your skin very well. You don't want anything that's too harsh that's going to irritate your skin. And I don't really like scrubs because I feel like all the scrubs that I've tried have an oil in them and they just leave a residue and then you have to wash your skin afterwards and I just, I don't like scrubs. I'd rather use a sponge and then my regular body wash with that. So this just works miracles. This is like my top number one secret for my like best self tan that I can get is using this. And this also will remove your self tanner so if you make any mistakes or you have any buildup, you can lightly go over it to get rid of that really dark area and you can also totally take your tan off with this. And that's what I did before I did this. I had a little bit of a leftover tan from last time I used the self tanner. This totally removed it. So once I get out of the shower, I let myself dry a little bit and then I will put this Aveeno Daily Moisturizing Lotion just on my elbows, my ankles, my knees, um, the inside of my elbows right here, any areas that get kind of funky you want to make sure you put lotion on before because that's going to create, like I said, that little bit of a barrier so the self tanner isn't going to soak in as much and it also will moisturize those dry patches so I get really dry around this area and it will turn really dark here and so I like to put the lotion right there and then I also put it on the back right here. I put it right on my elbows just in this area right here and then like in the crook of my elbow. 
Um, I also put it on my knees and on my feet, on my hands. Make sure you get your wrists really well, just any area. And they tell you to do that when you get a spray tan as well. Um, just any area that gets kind of weird. But you don't want to put lotion on your whole body because that can, like I said, create a barrier and it won't soak in as well. If you had extremely dry skin, you had a lot of dry patches and cracked skin, then you would probably want to mix yourself tanner with a lotion just to help it go on more smoothly. But um, I take care of the dry skin and stuff with the exfoliating. I'm going to be mainly showing you guys my upper body. I only do my upper body unless it's summertime where I'm actually wearing shorts and showing my legs and stuff. But for the fall and the winter time and spring and stuff, I wear jeans so I don't really. So another thing I wanted to mention is I like to start at the bottom of my body and work my way up. So it just helps with like when you're bending your arms and stuff, I feel like you're creating more creases while it's drying. So I like to start at my feet. That way I can have my regular dry arms and be working with my legs and work my way up. And then I do my arms and my chest and stuff last because I have noticed I will get like a crease line here from like constantly going bending your arm. Okay, so this is extremely awkward, but we're gonna work with it. I already have my gloves on. So these are the gloves that came with the self tanner and they help protect your hands because it's very hard to get it off your palms and you just don't wanna fool with it. So I like to start with like small pumps and kind of work my way up to it. So I like to rub it around in my hands like this and then just start applying it in circular motions. And you wanna work quick with this. So I'm going to take a little bit more and work on the top half of my leg. I don't like to just do one big squirt for the entire leg because it's harder to work with the whole thing and blend it. But I'm still going to have to blend the whole leg, obviously. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how I do my foot. I just take a little teeny tiny drop, only about like that much, rub it between my hands, and then I just start putting it on the top of my foot. And you want to just kind of brush it down like that, almost like a natural tan would be. A natural tan wouldn't totally cover your entire foot. It's just going to like kind of go over the top of it. So you don't want to totally cover your whole foot. It just looks unnatural. And you don't want to get on this area here because just like the palm on your hands, it's really going to absorb and it's going to look unnatural. So just kind of brush over like that. And then I get the inside of my foot. And you don't even really want to apply like a blob or anything to an area that absorbs a lot like around your ankles or your knees. You just want to use whatever is left over on your hand. So I'm going to show you just how I do my knee really quick. I'm putting a little bit on my hand and I'm going to start working it into my thigh. Normally what I do is I apply it to my calf and my thigh and then whatever's left over I take it over my knee. Like I said again, I'm not going to take a huge blob and apply it straight to my knee. I'm going to kind of work on the areas around it and then whatever's left over I'm going to go over my knee. Now after I do my legs, that's when I do my chest. Like I said before, just so I don't keep my arms moving and stuff while I was trying to dry on my arms, so I do my arms last. I'm going to go in and do my arms. So I like to start at the top part of my arm obviously and work my way down. I like to start on the back of my arm. You really want to blend well around your wrist. And I'm just going over my elbow with whatever is left on my glove. Okay, so for my face, what I like to do is take my daytime moisturizer, which is this the Aveeno Ultra Calming Daily Moisturizer with SPF 15, and I like to mix them two together. I would never apply a self tanner directly to my face. I just feel like it's too much, and it's just not going to go on evenly. You can see it's like hardly any of the tanner at all, just enough to kind of turn my moisturizer a little bit brown. Apply it to my face. And I'm kind of applying this more like I would um, a foundation, just to make sure it's even. If your skin is breaking out or acting up, I would not recommend doing this. Um, I don't have any breakouts going on right now, so it's okay, but I think you just don't want to aggravate those then even more. Then I take a little bit more of the mixture, and but this actually has a little bit more of the self-tanner. And I just go underneath my jaw. 
And you also want to take whatever's left over up around your ears, just like behind your hairline there. So for my hands, what I do first is I take off one of my gloves, and you can already see the line for my tanner. So I'm going to take just a tiny bit, like hardly even enough, that's probably even too much. I'm going to rub it between my fingers just to kind of even it out a little bit. And then I'm just going to go over just the very top of my hand hardly even applying that much at all. Your hands are naturally gonna be a lot lighter than your body, but you definitely want it to match. You don't want it to have like a line. You wanna blend this part really well. This is probably the weirdest part on self-tanner, that and this area right here. So now what I do for this hand, you're probably wondering, well, you already have your glove off of here. I kinda put it halfway on my hand like this, just to where I'm using the palm part. So I can just use this to apply it, kinda like a, um, like a mitt. You wanna make sure you don't get it up on your cuticles. So another little trick that I have is actually take a washcloth and you wanna just wet it a little bit. But what I'm gonna do with this is kinda of put it on my finger and use it to kinda of wipe away any excess product or any areas that I want to take away the tanner or kinda of just dab it off that way it doesn't end up being too much because there are those areas that even if you didn't put a lot on it, they're still gonna show up way darker. So you just wanna take off like a very light layer of the top surface of it just so it doesn't end up being too dark. And I mainly like this trick for my hands and then also my um, elbows and stuff. So I have a little bit more on here and I'm just gonna go over my knuckle right here. This large knuckle always ends up way darker. And then I'm also gonna take this and go over my elbows right here. There's one other thing I wanted to mention. You guys might be wondering, well, how do you get your back if you do it yourself and you don't have someone to help you? Basically what I do, I'm not gonna show you because I don't plan on tanning my back, but I push my arm down like this so I can reach as far down as I can, and that will get me about to the middle of my back. And then I wrap my arm back around like this and try to do it like that. And I will also put tanner on the back of my hand and that way I can get right in the center of my back. So if you put the tanner on the back of your hand, you can reach around and get the very center like between your shoulder blades. And then on your lower back, you know, you can reach that like normal. And I can pretty much reach every part of my back and I have really short arms. So I wanna real quickly touch on what I'm gonna do afterwards. So I like to wear really loose clothing. You could sleep in something like this, but I like to just throw on a really loose t-shirt. And you also wanna wear a shirt that is dark. So like a dark gray or a black or a dark blue or something because it is going to transfer because it has that bronzer in it so you can see where you're putting it and that lotion is tinted so until you wash it off it is going to stain like your clothes and your sheets and stuff it doesn't stain it but it will like leave a residue and it can be hard to get out you have to wash it a few times to get it. so then when i wake up in the morning i like to go out in the natural sunlight and look at it so i can see what areas i might need to scrub off any extra if any areas ended up looking weird or if I need to correct a mistake or something like that. And then I will take a shower and just wash my body like normal with my body wash, just to wash off the excess bronzer. So then when you get out of the shower the next morning, you wanna make sure that you put your lotion on. This is one of the next most important steps to exfoliating is moisturizing. So the next morning after you wash off the bronzer and stuff and you have your nice tan, go over it with your moisturizer and it will just keep it looking healthy and very glowy and it will last a really long time. So you want to continue to put your lotion on day and night. You have to do it twice a day because I even noticed just with doing it in the morning after my showers, um, the tan would still start to rub off in areas that would get dry. And at the end of the day, I start to feel a little bit dry anyway. So if you don't have really dry skin, I wouldn't worry about it. But definitely at night, I like to go over just like my arms and stuff um, before I go to bed just to make sure that it's not getting too dry. Because once your skin starts to get dry, it's going to flake off and your tan's just going to come off with it. And it's not going to last as long. So I'm not sure how well you guys can tell, but this is the tan that I have after just one use. I used it last night and then I washed off the bronzer and stuff this morning. And then this is what I'm left with after one day. And I'm really impressed with that. I didn't really have any problems at all and I feel like it definitely looks really good on my face as well and I love the color that I got from it. Definitely a lot darker. When you first wake up the next morning it looks crazy and really splotchy I guess where it's just starting to wear off your skin but once you wash it all off it looks really good like this and you can kind of touch up areas that you think might need more or you need to take away from by scrubbing just whatever you think but definitely love it. I would recommend doing another layer which I'm about to do tonight. So I'm going to put on another layer just so I have that really deep dark tan. Right now I have a good base color and I feel comfortable you know, going out like this and stuff. But if you want to look super tan, then definitely do a second layer. Maybe even a third if you still want to be darker, just depending on how light your natural skin color is. But if you're already kind of dark or you have a nice base tan, then just one layer would do just fine. So I wanted to show you guys what it looks like after I've done two coats. My lighting kind of washes me out a little bit, but I'm going to have all kinds of pictures and stuff on my blog where you can really see it. 
But this is after two coats of doing it. I see a huge difference in my skin. Again, like I said, the lighting really isn't showing it, but I just love the way it looks. It's just fantastic and super dark after applying two coats. So I hope you guys enjoyed my video on how to apply self-tanner. If you guys have any other tips, please leave them down below. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, and don't forget to comment and subscribe if you haven't already, and I will talk to you all soon. Bye, everybody. Use the promo code GLAMMYUP8, which is my YouTube username, to get 10% off your order. Don't forget to go check out GetGlammedUp.com for a full list of step-by-step -step instructions just to make it a little bit more simple for you all. And then also before and after pictures are on there as well.